Hey! 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 But you know, I, I now run a school of astrology, the Pudong Institute of Astrology. I've been working on this for the past 20 years. And I'm finally offering classes, and it's becoming good, successful. And I couldn't be more proud of it. But it does put a lot on my plate. And although I have a, a good staff, you know, people still don't want other astrologers but me. So then, you know, I have to can't split myself in two. But um you know, we'll give me a little time. We're getting it together. You know, the theater season is here and I'm gonna to push the show for September. Cause with everything that I'm doing, there's no way that I can have this show open on schedule. So but please keep your donations coming because it will come in handy when I start uh, putting that production together. Today, we are going to talk about the moon in Virgo. Now, understand that from Aries to Virgo completes the first six signs of the zodiac. And then the last six signs of the zodiac, from Libra to Pisces, represents a relationship-oriented psychology. From Aries, now this is important, listen up. From Aries to Virgo, anyone born under these signs, from Aries to Virgo, are here to concern themselves with their own individual personal development. And I got to explain this talking about the moon in Virgo. Because this is a major, major, major transitional phase that occurs. There are four major moon phases. And I haven't spoken about the moon phases when it comes to transits and progressions and lunations. I talked about the moon phases when it comes to transits. Full moon, new moon, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. But this is not the phase that I'm talking about. This lunar phase is another form of internal astrology, different from the external astrology, the zodiac and the birth chart that you all have come to know so well, either through your own or through me. You know, I mentioned that there is a esoteric astrology and then there is exoteric astrology. And there's also mundane astrology. Mundane astrology deals with the uh, movements of the planet as they occur right now. Mercury retrograde, when it occurs, the moon being full moon or new moon, these all fall under the branch of mundane astrology. But when we're talking about exoteric astrology, we are talking about the personality and the ego in which astrology is based. But when we change and we talk about esoteric astrology, we are no longer talking about the ego and the personality as the signs of the zodiac are based on. That's the template of the human personality based by the ego. The ego and its 12 different personalities, which are the signs of the zodiac. In esoteric astrology, we focus on the soul and on the beauty of the soul and the transcendental elements of humanity, which only happens via through the soul. This is the basis of esoteric astrology. The moon in Virgo is a powerful position. And you have to understand that before there were 12 signs of the zodiac, there were only six signs. You have to understand, everything in nature evolves or degenerates. The, the zodiac wheel that we have today it was not the same zodiac that existed thousands of years ago, or even millions of years ago. There was no zodiac. The universe, the universe our solar system was barely stable. You know, in coalescing. If you take my astrology classes, you'll know more about that, because I'm going to gross detail about that. Okay? So understand that um, there were six signs of the zodiac. 
There wasn't 12. And Virgo is one of those six signs of the Zodiac. In fact, the mythology of the Milky Way galaxy can be traced to Virgo. Now, the woman carrying the torch, and she flees and runs, and she drops the, the torch, which is the torch of Prometheus, which he steals from the fire, then he stole the fire from, from Zeus. That's the same torch that we're talking about. As above, so below. So the mythology really explains a lot, folks. Do yourself a favor and educate yourself on mythology. Because there, there's so much esoteric answers that I really should be an astrologer of the esoteric, not the exoteric. It's rich in history. Both anthropological history and cosmic history. So understand that a Virgo represents the 12 lunar mansions. You know, uh, the, 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 the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., that obelisk points to the stars of Virgo. And it, it points to a specific star. Look it up. Look it up. And that star is called Spica. Spica, it's a star within the constellation cluster of Virgo. So Virgo is old, old, old in antiquity. The wisdom of Scorpio begins in Virgo, which is why Virgo and Scorpios are powerful contenders. Virgo is equally, if not smarter, than Scorpio, because Scorpio is a concentrated energy and focus that, 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 that centers on self-preservation and self-survival. Virgo is not that selfish. Virgo, and when I say selfish, when it, when it comes to Scorpio, I'm not talking about the individual person. I'm talking about the principle behind the sign of Scorpio. It is a selfish orientation. So, and, and one that's self-preserving. Virgo does not function in that psychology. Virgo's intelligence, which is culminated in Scorpio, is used more towards educating, advancing, and healing humanity. The opposite polarity of, of, of uh, Virgo is Pisces, the giver, the healer, our journey back to God. So the wisdom of Virgo comes from the polarity of Pisces. Remember, Pisces is psychic. It's a clairvoyant. It's a medium. It is the most psychic of all the signs. Deep, deep. This is the knowledge and discrimination and detail-oriented qualities of Virgo. Because we're pulling from the opposite polarity of Pisces. And that there constitutes a balance of the spiritual, which is Pisces, with the physical and the logic and the mind, which is Virgo. So understanding that, there is a subtle and soft, but very powerful impact that people with the moon in Virgo can do on unto others. If you have, if you have the, the moon in Virgo, you are a natural healer, spiritually and physically. If someone is sick, and you are helping them, they will get better just for the mere fact that you have that moon placing. Because Virgo is the sign of the magician and the medicine man. And herbology, plants, healing herbs, crystals. That's coming from Pisces, the polarity. Do you see? Just that in Pisces, it's all out there in the ocean and, 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 and easy pickings. With Virgo, it is the sign of discrimination and focus and singularity. So the gifts and magic of Pisces... Virgo uses it for specific reasons, and this is the essence of magic. Magic is defined by the ability to manipulate the natural forces of nature. If you can do that, like an alchemist turning lead into gold, then you are a magician. It does exist. There's no such thing as, and I'm not talking about the magician where you pull a rabbit out of a hat. I hate the fact that they call people like that magicians because they are corrupting the world. Magic is real. And if you tap into that inner divinity, you can be just as much a magician as Jesus Christ was. Because like he said, 
what I can do, you also can do. And Jesus' birth chart, by the way, is Virgo. He was born Virgo. He's not a Capricorn. That's another lie from the church. A big one, too. Because it doesn't make sense. We're living in the Piscean age. And Jesus represents the Piscean age. But the Piscean age has a polarity point on earth, which is Virgo. When we reach the Aquarian age, the polarity point will be Leo. So we're going to be expressing Leo energy on the planet. But the polarity point of where the energy is coming from is Aquarius. As above, so below. So we're entering the constellation of Aquarius. But the manifestation of that energy will occur through Leo. The opposite polarity. As above, so below. The heavens represents Aquarius. Leo represents Earth. We're in the Piscean age. The Piscean age is represented by the heavens. Virgo is represented by Earth, which is why if you go to the 2,000 years that we've been through, all the symbols of Mother Teresa, the Virgin Mary, the symbols of womanhood, all of those point to Virgo because the polarity of, the, of that constellation is being expressed here. Okay? I'm not expecting you to understand this completely and fully. Take my classes. Take my classes and I spell it out. But understand that there is a polarity point in which the energy of Aquarius will come through down here. And it will be through Leo. So what can we expect in the Aquarian age? We're going to expect a lot of creativity. A lot of young people ruling the ages. Like it says in the Bible, and the old shall be led by the young. You know? And, and Leo represents youth, adolescence. And most of the people who have the wealth and the power now are the young people. The young people that are rising now, replacing those born in the 50s and 60s, which I belong to. So we're going to see a whole different breed of people. And Leo represents creativity, authority, but it represents more like an autocratic behavior and narcissism. So we're going to see a lot of that. If you go back in time and look at the Leo age, in which we're going back 26,000 years, you know, the procession of the equinoxes, you know, the, the dials change every 2,500 years. In the next 2,500 years, we're going to have the, uh, the Capricorn age. And then after that, we're going to have the Sagittarian age. We're not moving forward, we're moving backwards because of the procession of the equinoxes. It's a lot of mathematics I'll explain to you in one of my classes. Okay, but if you're not going to be an astrologer, there's no sense for you to know that because the, the mathematics is insane. Insane. I say all of this to say that uh, all of these mysteries and wisdoms of the ancients and the ancient wisdom teachings are found in Virgo. Virgo is a sign of great beauty, but also of great suffering. Here is my uh, apple martini. Is my second one for the day. It's about 2.40 in the morning. I have not really been smoking or drinking much. Oh, my hair is growing too. Oh, my God. Because I want to be a Rasta and, and do my hair. And, and I like, you know, have my hair. You know, I don't like to, you know, I mean, if I have to buy hair, okay. Uh, but understand that the Virgo moon is beautiful. It is the illumination of the complete human being. Virgo represents the complete Human being. Again, Aries, the baby. Taurus, the goober. Gemini, the child. Cancer, the, the Gemini is the child, the young child. Cancer is the child. You know, when we say Gemini, we're talking about, you know, like 10, 11, 12. And cancer represents babies, but it's still considered like in the 13th, well, not, not really, not really the high. Uh, we're dealing with maybe like uh, 5, 6 is Gemini, 7, 8, 9 is, and 10 is cancer. And then we go to Leo, and Leo represents the teenager. Which begins at 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then from there, you have another phase of development. Here, there's a gray area where now there's a split in transition in psychological behavior and orientation. We're moving from the teen years to our 20s. It's a more obscure period than our teen years. 
Because now in our 20s, we're on our own. We're moving away from our parents. It was like that traditionally, right? Most people in their 20s now stay home with their parents because it's more economical. But the fact that they, they're still codependent doesn't make them adults. When they reach age 30, that's when they become adults. And that's represented by Virgo. Virgo represents adulthood. So from Aries to Virgo, you have a whole phase of human development that's oriented towards the individual development. From Libra, beginning with the cardinal sign of Libra, to Pisces, we concern ourselves with others. In Libra, you get married to someone. In Scorpio, you have sex with someone. In Sagittarius, you learn from someone, an institution, or you, you gain your faith from church or the religion, the clergy, because Sagittarius rules religion, the church, the clergy, colleges, and universities. It's a codependency. These signs are codependent upon other existence that acts as a coenzyme, a lock and key with the rest of humanity. Capricorn deals with a, your relationship with your boss, your career, and what you leave behind to society and as the final report card. In Aquarius, you either go against everything that has been consolidated from Aries to Capricorn, or you go against it. The sign of the anarchist, the monarch, the rebel, the malcontent. And then in Pisces, you say, fuck it. The hell with it all. And then you leave this behind and return back to God. And hopefully you don't come back to this motherfucker again. But if you got karma, you're bounded by karma and you now must return back to the wheel of rebirth. That, that, that's an entire completion. Okay? This is what's meant when they talk about Jacob's ladder. One of the metaphorical references. But Jacob's ladder, to be honest, deals more than that. And this also connects to Virgo. It's been 17 minutes and 5 seconds, and many of you probably won't appreciate that I'm giving you this, and I'm sorry if you don't. That tells me that you're probably very young or very impatient. But as you get older and you look at this video years from now, you're going to see how important it was for me to put this together concerning the moon in Virgo. The moon in Virgo is deep, and... To talk generically would be an injustice to the sign, the people who have that placing, and also to myself as an astrologer who knows better. So, excuse the fact that I took almost a whole um, video to discuss a little bit about the history of the moon in Virgo and, and, and the constellations and the history going back several hundreds of millions of years. Because I want you to understand and, and appreciate that this ancient wisdom and knowledge has been inherent in Virgo and has existed long before any other sign of the zodiac ever existed. So the wisdom of Virgo is even a mystery to us astrologers. And it pulls from the opposite polarity of Pisces, the most mysterious sign of the zodiac, which as astrologers is still poorly understood. Okay. Let's jump in, let's jump right in, and let's talk about the moon in Virgo. We're going to talk more generalities about the moon in Virgo. First, let me just say that the moon in Virgo, you know how I talk about the beautiful women that are Leo and Gemini. Every woman is beautiful and every woman is gorgeous, but there is a trademark that's undeniable Virgo. You see it in Sophia Loren, Greta Garbo. You see it in, oh my God, there's so many famous actresses born in the Virgo. Beautiful. You know, you know who they are. Legendary. Icons. Uh, I'm in my 50s, so I know the women of my age and generation. Uh, but if you look at birth charts of your famous celebrities and you see the moon in Virgo, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's an undeniable signature of pure human beauty and completion. But with the moon in the practical sign and systemic sign of Virgo, you know, you are likely to be someone who is highly appreciative of structure. And there are many Virgos that love structures. You know, it's an earth sign. So, but you also appreciate organizational structure. Not just in your personal life and private life, but in your work and professional life. And with the moon, you know, Virgo is a natural manager. And to have the moon in Virgo can make you much of an executor. 
Uh, the flaw and the drawback behind that is that uh, with this placing, you might tend to be a little bit too discriminating or too critical and not pull from your opposite polarity of Pisces and see the humanity or use a certain level of tact or diplomacy that will spare the person's feelings. People with the moon in Virgo are not very good at discerning other people's feelings when they say something and hurts them. People with the moon in Virgo are always surprised that they hurt people. You know, but that's because, you know, the, the orientation of the moon in Virgo is to deal completely with mundane matters and to employ the five senses by the ego of the ego to carry out those kinds of objectives. The emotional temperament of a human being plays second. It plays second to the emotions. I mean, to, it plays second to the, the logic. The logic with Virgo comes first. The emotions come second. And that's in dealing with other people. But if we, but when it comes to his own emotions, or her own emotions, that can be just as cutthroat to themselves, denying their feelings. And many, many years after a while, they become emotionally numb. Or they attract abusive types who reflect the lack of um, emotional empathy. Or consideration or so it seems you know because people might think that the uh, people with the moon in Virgo are very uh, you know like like hard and don't really care about people's feelings and emotions and that's not true it could be further from the truth is the problem is that the moon in Virgo uh, makes you so vulnerable and so self-critical that there's no way that you can see beyond beyond the box of, of self-criticism that most moon and Virgo people put themselves in. And then they don't see the virtues and beauty that other people see because the people with the moon and Virgo, Virgo are so caught up with their own judgments of themselves and highly critical nature of themselves that they don't see the other qualities that are just as positive and just as beautiful because... They feel that, listen, it's not perfect. You know, and Virgo is the sign that deals with perfection. You know, it wants to strive to be perfect. And it's a losing battle because there's no way that you can be perfect on a material plane that was designed not to be perfect, not to make you happy. We're on this plane not to be happy, but to experience. Now, so the people with the moon in Virgo can sometimes be very naive and get a rude awakening in life later down the road and then they have to play catch up emotionally to do things and explore things that they denied themselves decades earlier because of, of the way that they felt about themselves or that they, they didn't feel confident or they didn't feel worthy or they didn't get the right signals or cues growing up from their teachers their parents society because all of that plays a role in molding a person it's not just about the signs of the zodiac and the uh, astrological wheel even though it's a misnomer because it tells you exactly what you're living and experiencing it. You know, you will never know it. So you will know if your life is moving parallel to the horoscope, if it is or if it isn't. You know? So these types of discriminations are um, kind of like um, very uh, involuted with Virgo. You know, and, and Virgo has a hard time um, being kind to himself or herself. You know, uh, is the moon in Virgo placing um, is difficult and challenging because it makes the person truly, truly dissect themselves to a point where there's nothing left of the person. You know? Um, I don't like this kind of discrimination with Virgo. But that is the situation that goes on here. The moon in Virgo describes you know, internal processes that they never reveal to anybody else. There's a lot of virtue and a lot of dignified silence with people with the moon in Virgo. You know, they have a powerful intelligence that can go beyond the riches of this lifetime. If only they were secure enough within themselves 
to realize that their uniqueness is a uniqueness that's not found anywhere else in any other time. And we're done with part one.